Hello friends, I'm Alana and welcome to my channel. Just a quick video for your Monday evening. I made a video, I don't know, maybe a month ago about game reviews and what it was like reviewing games at IGN and sort of addressed some common criticisms people have of game reviews and a lot of misconceptions. And there have been a bunch of comments in response to that uh, where people say, I stopped reading IGN as soon as too much water happened. A lot of these people are just memeing because it is a very easy thing to make fun of. It is clearly not a well-written phrase. That's like half the problem. But I do also think a lot of the comments that sort of elaborate on why they don't like too much water or that are being serious about it are just kind of dunking on themselves for not having read the review. So I'm making this video um, inspired by one particular comment. Let me read it for you. This says, I stopped reading IGN when too much water happened. What a dumb thing to say. They don't understand that just walking around on land all the time is boring and a map with water is way more fun, like GTA, for example. Again, have seen a lot of comments of people criticizing too much water <laughs> um, who just definitely don't know what it means because it's actually a very good criticism phrased very poorly, which you are absolutely allowed to make fun of IGN for. For the record, I didn't work at IGN when this happened. I did write a blog post about how I felt like everyone was missing the legitimate point though. <laughs> so if we go through this review, I wonder if it's still at the bottom. It looks like it's gone. Yeah, I think because IGN actually got rid of their um, pros and cons, which I imagine probably happened in some part because of this issue. Uh, too much water is no longer listed. If I just make myself a little bit smaller, there we go. So this is really for anyone who is curious or like, you know, if, because a lot of people seem to have missed the point. This is like, for if you want to know, I'm totally not even trying to defend it. I'm just trying to expand on the thing because a lot of people have clearly misunderstood it. If you would prefer to not be informed uh, because it might ruin the joke a little bit for you, then leave now. <laughs> so there is nothing in this review that says, oh, there's too much water on the map. I don't like water, ocean's bad. No, it's specifically listed here. It says it's not a new complaint, but Hoenn is still imbalanced type-wise, heavily favoring water. It's especially noticeable in Alpha Sapphire and which team Aqua, the villains of the piece, use a lot of water types. It feels like there are water Pokemon in nearly every battle and I have an overleveled Pikachu, Pikachu to show for it. You also have to navigate many bodies of water since much of the late game involves the HM surf and dive to get from place to place. This paragraph, which again is a solid criticism, uh, was basically just minimized into the phrase too much water, which sounds so silly. And I think, you know, IGN is right to have removed the pros and cons list because a lot of people just read them without reading the review. And I guess they didn't think about it that way. They were like, no, it just summarizes everything we said in the review, but it totally didn't work that way because people would just skip the review and read the thing. What it's saying is that because there are so many villains that have water type Pokemon and so many areas where you are on water, you literally have to change your team to have electric type Pokemon in order to counter the amount of water Pokemon that you fight. Which again, I think is a solid criticism and very fair because one of my favorite things about playing Pokemon games, in my opinion, is uh, the fact that your team can be so customized that statistically it wouldn't be unreasonable for me to guess that you have never had the same team that I have had. And when you are specifically playing one of the only Pokemon games that just constantly gives you water type Pokemon to fight, it means that your team isn't necessarily just the same well-rounded team that you would always like to have. It takes away some of your choice by forcing you to build up a team that is good against water type Pokemon, which means you don't necessarily have all the Pokemon that you love. I think it just, especially, you know, for an RPG series, it is for sure a flaw that in order to succeed, you have to cater to one specific enemy type. And it's like just also very limiting when there are so many kinds of enemy types in, uh, in Pokemon that you would restrict me to just finding water. That's what the, that's what too much water means. There are literally too many water Pokemon, which means that most fights are gonna be the same and require the same uh, special attacks and involve having a team of electric Pokemon who are very leveled up. It's legitimately like a completely solid criticism. Like that is, I agree with the flaw. <laughs> Obviously where IGN went wrong here was thinking everyone would read the review and then immediately know what the pros and cons mean. And even outside of that, I think that's giving them too much credit. It's it's such a silly way to phrase that. From my understanding, the person who wrote the review wasn't actually the one who wrote the con. 
someone else put that in. It originally said type imbalance, but they were like, oh, that sounds too complicated. So they changed it to too much water, which is so silly and so memeable. Um, I'm absolutely not defending any of that side of it. It is, it is very silly. But also just, you know, yeah, wanted to make this quick video to explain literally what it means. In case there are people who've ever been curious about what it actually is referring to, or maybe wanted the information, if you have clicked on this because you enjoy the meme, I'm not trying to take that away from you. As you were. <laughs> and that is pretty much all I have to say. I'm Alana, I will see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.